all of you are ready. Uh, basically, the Secretary of Education uh, and I had a conversation this morning uh, regarding him approving the three days that we um, had off between the 16th, 17th, and 18th of March, uh, which I sent him a letter about about four weeks ago and never got a response. So I, before I submitted the request for the snow days, the three snow days and the one day uh, for the emergency heating issue in Tunbridge, I was going to clear up the issue with the days on the, uh, um, in March when we got out early. If you recall, they announced on the 13th that we would be getting out on the 18th and we decided to get out uh, and not come back because I, I was getting a lot of pressure from all different sides and we just made the decision it was basically better not to come back, but I have to formally go through a waiver process to ask for those three days be credited. Did he see that request? He didn't acknowledge that he did, but he did see the one this morning that I sent, which is a duplicate. And I put on the original date when we did request it so he could yep. see that. Okay. Well, I'm expecting, he said, I'll get back to you shortly. That's, that was early this morning. So I expect mm -hmm. I'll see it. Yeah. Um, but it may hurt our chances of getting the snow days. Um, the other night, Don, and you weren't on the call, the board gave me, gave us the authority to be able to go from 177, which is part of the calendar to 175, which was the state minimum. Yeah. And there are three additional snow days that we had to request um, we may not get both. I don't know we'll, whether we'll get the three snow days and we'll get the three uh, days, you know, in March that we asked, but I'm going to try. I just thought I ought to clear this problem up first. Um, so, what, Do you know what their rationale would be for denying that request? That we've asked for six versus uh, three, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they think. I just, uh, I didn't want to do them all in one fell swoop because I was just trying to him to get him yep. to clean up the other issue. Um, but they're reasonable people. They're, they'll work with us, I think. I hope so, anyway. Um, the secretary basically started his conference this morning uh, with the 60 superintendents basically by saying that, uh, by all indication, Vermont's in a lot better shape than a lot of other states uh, as far as the trends go, health trends. Um, and we seem to be uh, in a good place uh, compared to the other 50 state, or other 49 states. Um, there will be new guidance that uh, during for graduation, and it'll probably be the last guidance for graduation. That'll be tomorrow. They're going to allow kids to get out of their car if there is a ceremony. Um, but only uh, one at a time to maybe go and pick something up. They, they want everybody to congregate as a family in a car together. They don't want people mulling around, even though uh, the guidance allows, you know, groups of 10, uh, probably going to go to groups of 25. That will be released tomorrow in the press conference that the governor has, uh, that new guidance, and it'll probably be the last guidance that's given on um, graduation. I asked the secretary specifically in the chat today about the um, summer programs. I wanted to know what he had to, he was gonna say about them, and he, he said, I'll be coming out with something tomorrow. So that will be at the governor's conference as well. Uh, but I did ask him directly uh, because I think we all want to know. Uh, yeah. uh, so the guidance tomorrow will be on graduations and summer programs, uh, and we'll we'll have the definitive answer. And he didn't think it was going to change. Um, the other question uh, regarding budgeting: um, if you guys want to do a little research, look at. Uh, House Bill five, uh, 959, House Bill five, uh, 959, which is uh, the guidance on the sets the tax rate at pre-COVID levels, and that will cre increase taxes for three cents. Um, and that's the 
most important, soonest kind of thing that they want us to look at uh, for this year. Um, they have put off, and Carl, this is the answer to your question last time we talked. You wanted to know how they were the latest wisdom on how they're going to retire this big gap in the edge fund. And what he said today was that they're putting off those hard decisions until they reconvene. Um, and I did hear that they were going to go out probably around the 15th of June, but they weren't going to tackle those big, big decisions until probably after they reconvene um, uh, later on. Um, and there is no, they're kind of avoiding it right now. That's what I was told anyway. Um, they did put an appeal to change the CARES Act um, information, as you recall. Uh, they weren't excited about the way the money was being uh, given out, and uh, they wanted to kind of take a step backwards and make ask some questions of the Fed, uh, see if they could get some things changed. The Fed has responded and said, there will not be any changes. So expect to see the COVID or the CARES Act money um, probably uh, around the 1st of July. It won't be available till then. Uh, and also uh, no changes in the ESSER money, which is um, uh, part of part of that, those pots as well of, of CARES Act money. Um, so, you know, they tried to, to make some changes, but the the Fed weren't, wasn't interested in making those changes. And I think the changes had to do with the share that independent schools were going to get as compared to public schools, um, I think, uh, anyway. Uh, the um, state will be trying out a new system, uh, trying to show best practices and sharing in, uh, those best practices of, around the continuity of learning. It's called Edmodo. Um, Edmodo, M-O-T-O, uh, next year. And that should be up and running pretty, pretty soon. Uh, they also have, um, there's gonna be an opportunity for kids to use uh, VTVLC. It's gonna be a little more flexible. Uh, and there's also going to be some a portal regarding grading. Um, I will tell you that we've had some long discussions as a team about grading and about how we were going to deal with that um, this uh, at the end of the year. Um, Mary Ellen, if you're on um, the phone, could you go uh, do a star six and, and join in here? I think you might want to talk about the grading. Um, You may not have gotten on, I, I don't know. Um, so we ought to be able to have some things to tell you about how we're gonna grade at the end of the year pretty soon. Um, Ray, do you wanna help with that? Yeah. Uh, you can say? Oh, sure, sure. So my involvement is the, the state reporting, um, which of course is not the most important part. Um, but um, this was discussed, I believe, briefly in the meeting the other night, and then at the admin team meeting yesterday. Sorry, my days are running together. Yeah, yesterday. Right. Um, that uh, at the elementary level, there will be uh, narratives instead of, you know, grades, in essence. And uh, David Wells and I were on a call yesterday with the comp the web to school the company we use for grading uh and came away with a set of instructions about how the teachers would do that at, at the middle school and high school level if the teachers are uh using number grades you know at the elementary level it's standards based uh, one through four meeting or exceeding expectations things like that <laughs> at the high school level it's a uh, middle school and high school it's a bit more complicated um, in terms of high, the White River Valley High Schools on quarters, White River Valley Middle Schools on trimesters, you know, where the students ended in terms of the grading versus where they're going to be at the end of the year. And um, 
the phrase I keep hearing is uh, do no harm, right? So if you have a student who was doing really well up, to, up until the closure, you wouldn't want to penalize them. But vice versa, if you had a student who, who's uh, flourished uh, during the school closure, you would want to make sure that, that uh, the progress that they had made uh, would be recorded in the, in the grade. Um, so, so that the that could still or will still involve a narrative, meaning uh, a statement about the student's learning from the teacher, and uh, and that's something that at that level they have used over time, comments and notes, and so the teacher should be familiar with how to do that, and they will be supported in. Providing that feedback officially on the on the, the report card. Yeah, I don't think this conversation is over yet. I think we're still working on it, uh, but that's a little bit of a caption of Ray, a little caption of what we've talked about so far with this. Um, so, um, any questions on any of that for any of us? There was a, I, I got an email from from someone regarding professional development days, there was a question that the, Bruce did, I think you got the same same ask. They want a credit for those or something like that? Uh, credit for those. Um, for, for they, want, they, they wanted not to do them or I, it was from Sam. I don't think I was copied, or was I? Okay, I'll forward it, I'll forward it over to you then. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I was copied. Um, Basically, uh, we missed the call, I think, on, on, uh, on Tuesday, but we went all over this, basically. Okay, well, if that's been solved, then never mind. I, I yeah, don't... no, we uh, basically, the, the idea was that we were going to ask for the two days to go from, I got permission from the board to go from 177 to 175. Right. I got permission from the board in a second vote to go from 175 to 172. And actually, be one additional day for Tunbridge because they had a heating issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. um, but as I said earlier, I still have to get rid of the problem with the three days we got out. Okay. Um, March, and okay. Uh, I'm going to deal with that first, and then then ask make the request for the snow day. Okay. Um, no, so I, sorry, sorry to interject. I just no, no, no that's okay. I, no, no, uh, Don, Bruce. Yeah. I, if I if I may, Don, if I may, yeah. Um, so that would be the plan with the reduction from 175 to 170, 177 to 175. The would be, that would be those would no longer be student days, but they would right. be PD days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So finally, um, there is an opinion from the CDC and all the health officials in the state that we will be able to reopen in fall. We just don't know what that's going to look like, but they are assuring us that there will have to be uh, some changes made. It may be a hybrid situation where we have some distance learning and some in-person learning. Um, there's a planning group uh, at the state level involving superintendents and others that basically are going to be going through this uh, and doing a plan, uh, a planning process uh, for the fall. Their first meeting will be tomorrow and um, it'll have health officials. Uh, it'll have superintendents. It'll have state officials. And I don't know whether there'll be maybe the NEA. I don't know. Uh, uh, but they're going to go, they're going to try to shift but they think we're going to have to shift between in-person and remote learning as we begin the year. So it's important that the system be set. So the five areas that they're looking at are leadership, funding, and policy. Uh, that's area one. Uh, safe and healthy learning environments, cleaning, et cetera, cleaning buses, things like that. Uh, using the CDC guidance. Uh, the third one is maintaining uh, operations once we get going, uh, how we're going to use the facilities. That, that has to do with splitting kids in a classroom, 
I don't know what we're going to do about preschoolers because they're all over every each other, and I just don't don't foresee a way of dealing with that. Um, and maybe even the kindergarten classes as well. You know, they have a tendency to to move around and and that kind of thing. And then the the fourth area will be continuity of learning, which is the curriculum work and how we're giving lessons remote learning versus face to face how that's going to work uh, and how we're going to transact business. Uh, And then the final is the social emotional and uh, health of students and staff. I have to tell you that uh, I've seen some signs of staff really, really being stressed. And um, I'm sure the parents are as well, because this has gone on for a lot longer than we ever anticipated. I mean, they're still doing it every day and, and I don't, you know, I'm not hearing every, anybody quitting, but the uh, VSA, my group, basically wrote a letter and was going to be submitted today to the secretary outlining concerns, and it was about four pages. We all got a chance to critique it, add things, subtract things, make, make our voices known to it by 10 o'clock this morning, and then it was going to be edited and and sent to the secretary about the things that we have to consider. And that, for example, uh, one of the recommendations is uh, to have screening in the first contact a student has at school. Well, that first contact screening would be on the bus for a lot of these kids. And I don't know, unless you have more people riding like monitors and things, how you're going to do that. I'm not going to expect a bus driver to take kids' temperatures, even if it's a far head scan, and know that that's right. Um, There's a lot of things like that that we're we're grappling with. Um, How do you how do you redesign your class? Uh, One example was uh, Mount Pillar High has uh, about 1,200 kids, but they only have 450 desks. And because they're not, they're a very non-traditional, you know, way of, uh, you yeah. know, doing things there. Um, so the superintendent was asking, well, what am I going to do by six or 700 desks between now and the opening of school? If we've got to spread kids out in order to be able to make sure we keep the social distancing. So these are real world problems now <laughs> for all of us that are things we just kind of took for granted. I think we ought to prepare, and this is my own opinion, I think we ought to prepare for some kind of hybrid, at least for the first half of the year. I don't know, you know, and hopefully we'll buy some time until we get a vaccine, but um, I don't foresee, uh, you know, a whole lot changing uh, between where we are right now um, and where we will be in the fall. Uh, there was a lot of discussion around driver's ed. They did ask the. Excuse me, uh, Carl, Carl had a question. Yeah, go ahead, Carl. Um, as far as uh, as far as when they're talking about a hybrid model, um, are they? Uh, in, in, does this include um, staggered start times? Does this include um, the kids being kept in one classroom and, and specials coming to the to, to to the to the kids versus the kids traveling to? you know, uh, uh, an art or a, a gym space? I mean, is there advice about like PE or singing? Some of those sort of, you know, restricting activities, uh, restricting restricting access to things, stuff like that. You mean singing with a mask on? <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, what he did say is that there will be protocols that will be in place before a t- school opens. These are things that are going to are minimum that have to be met before somebody opens as a school. And that'll be between the AOE and the superintendent and principals, probably uh, criteria that has to be met in order for you to open. Katie, I don't know what that is yet. So. Oh, am I on plugged in Katie again? Sorry, it's Amy. <laughs> sorry, I got my computer yeah. um, Amy. Well, I, I've talked to some, some uh, you know, f- uh, families, parents, and I do think it's very valuable to look at the a hybrid option of um, what we had talked about last time we met that um, uh, Debbie Matthews brought up that possibly we have situations where a child doesn't actually 
go back to school in our building and they are just doing the online learning and is there a way that we can um we can accommodate that that type of situation i see a lot of parents fearful of of sending their children back to a um, the the virus breeding grounds we all know elementary schools and high schools and everything how there's it's a large group of people together and stuff runs rampant through there on yeah, the germ factories the germ factory right yeah. so you know last last week we spoke about the possibility of, of having an option and maybe even there would be a teacher who doesn't want to return to the traditional in classroom teaching that could be the district wide the su wide um, online teacher for uh, that grade or a certain number of grades is that being looked at at all yeah, that, the uh, secretary did touch on that when he talked about hybrid, that that was part of what he was trying to include in, in talking about that. They haven't, they don't have a system in mind yet, but they're going to work on it with this committee that's going to be meeting. Um, yeah, I, I, there are a lot of people, I think it, this has been a real fork in the road for people deciding whether they're going to keep teaching uh, whether parents are going to keep sending their kids. Um, we have currently 23 openings in the SU for teachers. So we've got a lot of hiring to do this summer. I mean, I'm doing what I can do now before Jamie comes in, but he's going to have a fair share to deal with after July 1. Uh, it just seems reasonable if we had another option that that might be another avenue that both our parents stu and students and some of our staff could take and we would be able to retain both the students and the staff. Yeah, yeah. So again, I think uh, there will be some criteria that has to be in place. And um, I think that there will be opportunities um, for a couple of superintendents are going out on their own and doing this, their own system. They're buying the software to be able to do some of this because they are afraid they, won't, they can't wait for the AOE to give them advice. Yeah. Uh, I know of a couple in particular that just said, I can't wait around here for this. The problem is if we, if we disband like that and, and go all on our own, uh, we may have systems that aren't compatible with each other. And it may make it harder down the road when you're in a contract with somebody, but you can't use the product. Um, so, I think we ought to be a little bit more patient for another week or two to see what this committee comes up with. And they did say, the secretary did say there would be protocols in place that would basically say, you know, what you had to uh, consider before they get the okay to open uh, come fall. The only other thing I'll tell you um, that was mentioned today um, was that the state, and this is a really good thing, is going to do some bulk buying or have made or make available to us uh, masks, rubber gloves, and a lot of the supplies we are going to need in order to uh, do this. We're all on our own right now. Um, and, and that's not probably the most efficient way of doing this, but they're going to try to <coughs> bundle some of that um, and be able to make it available to the school districts. Um, they don't believe that we're going to need like surgical masks. And depending on what the job description is for the people who are using it, I mean, I think the nurses will need shields, yes. but I don't think teachers will need shields. They'll, they'll probably just need cloth masks or, or something like that. <laughs> um, I told you last time we've made available about, I don't know, 1,400 uh, mask for each school. I know a couple of the couple of the uh, bundles are still at the central office waiting to be picked up. We've divided them up and and we'll get them out to the schools as soon as people come by and pick them up. But <laughs> I think the state's going to make it easier to get, um, you know, um, hand sanitizer and and masks and uh, gloves and things like that for us and we'll be able to get that you know from the aoe rather than have to go out and purchase on the market for ourselves so i think that's a good thing 
Uh, does anybody have any questions? Carl, did I answer what you were asking? I'm, I'm feeling like I didn't, but. Um. Um, I just was, you know, as we try to figure out how we're going to, uh, uh, you know, what we need to plan for, for delivering services over the summer, just, you know, as much as we can know about, you know, are we going to be uh, uh, trying to, to do art on a cart because we can't uh, bring the kids to, to an art room, we have to bring the art teacher to the kids. Um, you know, do we need to have classroom teachers um, handling some of the special instructions because we want to minimize the number of adults that interact with kids? Um, are we going to serve meals? You know, is lunch going to be served in the classroom? And do we have to plan, you know, how to, 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 to move those, you know, the logistics of, of getting those things, you know, set up? And, and I understand we don't have all the answers, but um, at, the, at this point, but I think it's just very important that we're, we're, we're constantly pushing to try to get the answer so we can have as much planning time as we can, because mm -hmm. I just, I, I just worry that if we end up spending the first few weeks back at school, just trying to sort out how to do school, you know, it's, 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 it's just gonna be a lot of kids in classrooms sort of watching us fumble around. So the, 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 the more lead time on, on some of these practical, you know, how do we run a, 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 an elementary school in a hybrid model, you know, during COVID-19, the, the, the more information you can give our administration, the better. So thank you for all your, your work on finding this stuff for us. Yeah, I, um, well, <laughs> I will say this for Stockbridge and Rochester, you have space, <laughs> right? <laughs> you do have space, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I don't know. I, I don't know what it's going to look like. I will, but I don't think. I don't think we're going to be allowed to open, uh, Carl, be, until we we certified that we have certain things that they want us to have. So, anyway, anybody else questions? Bruce, if I could just say, the, there was a meeting of the COVID task force today, uh -huh. from three until four, with a follow up. Um, Kathy's on here. I think she was there. I'm sorry, I don't remember everyone else. I see Mary Ellen. Yep. That, yep, um, I was there. Yep. And please correct me if I'm wrong. That, of, uh, today was about the, the big, big categories and having people uh, assigned to or pick their interest levels for meetings starting next week to, to deal with the issues that, that you have discussed here. Do those categories line up with what the state's going to be doing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, we, uh, on other, other matters, I just will tell you that I am planning to resume being in the office uh, as of June 1st, Monday. Um, Probably it'll be uh, every other day or a couple days, and then time out. We want to try to space out the staff so we're not all crowding in there together. Um, and I'll be in I know Monday and or Tuesday and Wednesday. Christy and I will be in the office, maybe in. But, uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a, take a time for all the staff and. We start being back at the office on a, on a frequent, more frequent basis come Monday. So, um, Tara, do you have any news? Uh, special ed you talked about today. Do you want to share that or do you? Not yet. I will share that we finally received an initial response from Brad James that they have agreed and are sending us a sum of money. I don't agree with the sum of money, so I sent back a response this afternoon for Brad to review the additional documentation we sent to him. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more. Um, and that was for the FY19 that we've been waiting for and waiting for. Yeah, um, next waiting Thursday, since January, right? Yeah. Next Thursday night, um, I will add to this agenda the RFP for auditors. I asked for the responses by Wednesday so I can open them up here in the office when I'm here. And then I'll bring that to you all Thursday night um, for a decision to be made on who we want to be our auditors for FY20 through 23. 
And as far as the FY19 audits, I am wrapping up the final reviews um, this week and getting them back to the auditors and then just waiting for the revised final draft audits. And then once I get them, GHUD, I've already sent out to their board. So I will send them to you via email first for you to review. Um, and then if you have any questions, concerns, otherwise I'll ask you to accept them at your next board meetings if I get them to you prior to your board meetings. I have been delaying on doing the RFP for the tax anticipation notes and the lines of credit in hopes that the government legislative bodies were going to make a decision if they were going to change that statute of the 87%, but I cannot wait any longer. So I'm working on the cash flows now to try and get the RFP out on Monday at that 87% threshold for the districts who don't have a past budget. So once that comes in, um, I probably won't have a response clearly in time for the RSUD and GHUD meetings next week. So we'll have to do special meetings for those two, but I am in hopes to have the RFPs and the and, um, analysis of that response for the rest of your board meetings so that you can accept for your, <laughs> time for your school district treasurers. The RFP for fuel oil, I got the initial response today from the company that we're working with out of Maine, that buying group that we used to work with. Yep. He did let me know that we're waiting on one more company to provide their information, which hopefully we'll have on Monday. So I'll have some further information on that for everybody as well. We have decided to not do the universal chart of account transfer within infinite visions because when we did, it messed up all of our systems. So we have reverted the two districts that we completed and will now be just rolling over regular fiscal year and I will have to manually crosswalk before I send up the reports to the AOE. So we won't change the chart of accounts until we go to the e-finance software starting 7-1-21. So that's what I've been working on the last couple of weeks. Thanks, Tara. Uh, Mary Ellen, you wanna say anything? Um, I think most of you were on the call on Monday night, maybe not Don, but uh, we've been working on reanalyzing re the contracts. Last year, I renegotiated all the contracts and saved the SU thousands of dollars on some of the um, services that we share across schools. And so we've been contacting them this year again to see if we can even get a further reduction given the situation that we're in. So I'm uh, still working on that. And uh, working with grade alike teams, we're switching from grade alike meetings to now focus clusters. And these focus meetings will be working on planning for the start of the fall. What are all the things we need to know as teachers to get feedback from them so we could bring it to the COVID-19 team and uh, do all our planning with teacher input for all grades. So that's what I've been working on as well as being the preschool coordinator, working with the preschool because our preschool coordinator isn't here right now. So that's pretty busy. <laughs> Marianne, do you want to see anything about the grading discussion? We already, we already talked about this, yeah. right? I heard Ray. I think he did an awesome job. I think he summed it up nicely. Thank you, Ray. Right. Yep. I, I couldn't get on. I don't know why, but I uh, but I heard him and I was like, you go. That's great. <laughs> it's just what we well, talked about. Thanks, but no. Uh, <laughs> well, the, other, the other thing I'll say I'll is <laughs> the uh, final or the offers to the professional staff and to the support staff are out. Uh, they, we had to give the support staff a couple more days to get it back to us. Uh, the professional staff is due back on the 2nd of June, Tuesday, uh, and the support staff will be the 9th of June, uh, next a week from next. Uh, so Dina did confirm that they're both out, uh, and uh, we should hear back one way or the other uh, pretty soon. So, can can I ask why why the delay? I thought we were supposed to get a re hoping to be get a response back early in June rather than mid June. Well, the professional staff went right out, uh, and that's due back on this Tuesday. Uh, Dina, um, Dina didn't uh, didn't get it out until uh, yesterday or today, so that's yeah. the delay. Right. Uh, but I know Thank it did you. go out, and she asked me, "Do you want me to try to get it back 
the same time, but I knew she hadn't sent it out yet. So they needed to have a little time to consider it. And so we agreed on the ninth. So, um, that's about all I have, unless anybody has questions for me. I'm not sure I can answer them. Um, hope these times are valuable to you and I'll keep doing them, uh, as well as the odds and ends that we do, you know, on the weekends. Uh, it's incredible how many of those <laughs> I was putting the numbers on them, you know, and it's, uh, it's good. So anyway, hope you, hope you value those and look for those. So. Uh, I appreciate them and I appreciate the meetings every week. Uh, it's nice to be updated. People are definitely still asking questions. So thanks. Okay. Well, I don't have anything else unless anybody's got any questions for me. Uh, I just had a question of Tara, if she's still on. Yeah, I think she is. Yep. I'm still here, Don. What, when can I meet with you about that paperwork? I will be back in the building on Monday. All right, I'll come up Monday after I work during the day. Uh, what time are you getting to get there? I usually get here at nine because I can't drop my kiddos off until 8.30. Okay, are you there at four? Yes. Okay, I'll be up <laughs> at four on Monday. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. Terrific, thank you. You bet. Again, we should, we should be in person next week a lot more, so. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. I would okay. make a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Say see ya. Uh, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> see ya.